one of the main defenses that people make to show or argue that we had to have gone to the moon. And they often say that there would have been so many people involved in the conspiracy, it would have been impossible to keep it quiet. The only people who would have known about the hoax would have been those on a need to know basis. And that would have been very few people. You have your astronauts, you have the people filming everything and building the locations, and you have the people authorizing it, and that's it. Everybody else would have been doing their one task in the line and sequence of events that they were responsible for. And this segues into another defense made by people who believe we went to the moon, and that is why didn't NASA have them do things over after they made mistakes? And the reason for that is that this was live, and not everybody was in on it. And those hundreds of people you see at Mission Control, they're not in on it. You got the surgeons, they're monitoring the heart rate. You have the data guys, they're monitoring whatever is coming in on their feed. And everybody is looking at a live event and all over the world people are monitoring a live event. So there were no do-overs. Going back to what John Young said, by way of illustration about the photo guys, the photo guys would have received the film. The film couldn't be developed on the moon, it had a chain of custody. That had to take place and those guys were not in on it. So what has just happened to cause this stain pattern to emerge? The answer is orange juice. It has been well documented that the astronauts had a problem with the suction straws inside their helmets that allowed them to take sips of orange juice. The straws would accidentally squirt orange juice all over them and into their helmets and this was a big problem on the mission and the orange juice actually seeped into the neck ring. And it appears obvious now that the orange juice leaked through the neck ring at station nine and caused the camera to be stained. And that is direct evidence that they could not possibly be on the moon because if orange juice could leak through the helmet lock, then the helmet lock was not properly sealed to protect the astronauts from the vacuum of space. And this is because the helmet and the neck ring in order to be airtight must also have been watertight because water molecules are bigger than air molecules. So if water escaped, then oxygen also escaped and the suit would not have been pressurized. And in that case, the astronauts would be dead. Now, I am not the first to suggest there's some sort of Geppetto character in the rafters above pulling the astronauts by some sort of harness with fishing wire. Like, why does Charlie Duke want John Young to push on his head here? Ah, uh, oh, here we go again. Give me a help. There you go. Okay, just push, start pushing on my head. Okay, here we go. So he pushes down on his head and his feet seem to levitate backwards. You see, the vibration of my voice box makes the air vibrate between us. Then when the air vibrates your eardrum, you hear what I'm saying. But maybe you've seen a demonstration of a bell under a glass jar. With normal air inside the jar, you could hear the bell clearly. But when the vacuum pump drew the air out of the jar, there was nothing inside to carry the vibrations of the bell. Nothing until the air was let back into the jar. They can't be here are uh, photo numbers. And this is clear tooth number two. Okay, this is the fact almost crowded without a hammer. But if you hand it to me, I'll get it in a second. I'm going to take a couple more shots of this point. The sounds in space, um, it's odd to 
have a hammer or a metal tool and bang it against something and hear absolutely nothing. You can, you know, sound won't travel in the vacuum, so there you are outside and you can be hitting something, no sound at all. In space, since there's no, uh, there's no atmosphere, there's no air, mm -hmm. if you bang on something while you're doing your spacewalk, you will not be able to hear that. And this leads us to the dilemma of our final segment. All modern astronauts, such as Piers Sellers and Mike Massimino, claim to hear absolutely nothing when they're out on the International Space Station in the vacuum, banging away with metal tools and objects. Whereas during the Apollo missions, all kinds of sounds have been recorded that should not be possible if they are on the moon in the vacuum of space. Even when the astronaut in the photo to the right hit a metal tube into the ground with a hammer, no sound was made. All of the sounds so far analyzed were made by the astronauts as they were handling tools, but now we are going to analyze some sounds that are made a distance away from the astronauts. So what you just saw appears to be a smoking gun. That scene, which was broadcast live to the world during Apollo 15, shows astronaut James Irwin. He takes this cord or band off of a canister and those canisters are in the mesa table, which Irwin is standing in front of. He unravels the cord which has two metallic locks at the end of it, pictured here. They look like bullets. He takes that off, he unravels it, he reaches back with his right hand, and he throws the cord away. Let's take another look at it. So the argument has been made for the hammering that the sound is coming through the glove and it's miraculously getting into the microphones. But we don't have to deal with that argument because James Irwin releases the object and it hits the ship and he's not touching it and that sound is picked up by the microphone.